Hi everybody, it's Lace here, and uh, when you start the game brand new, you're going to either end up um, going through an initial scene, which will have some tutorials, and that's either High Vale, Solus Bridge, or Blood River. Um, I'm right now, at, like, let's pretend that I just completed uh, the Solus Bridge uh, starter area. I'm going to end up about right here. And my quest is going to tell me to find this guard captain. It's going to happen to be this guy. When I talk to him, his name's going to be Stanley. I actually haven't completed uh, the Solus Bridge um, massacre on this character, but, you know, we can pretend. Um, I'm basically going to end up here. This tutorial is going to cover um, overland map travel and uh, what the different things that you see on the overland map is. But I'm just starting out right here. Pretending I'm a brand new player. I would probably talk to this guy. He's going to give me some quests. Um, he's, and then I'd roam around this area picking up other quests. That'll be covered in another tutorial. Again, this is uh, going straight to the Overland map. So I'm just going to run back out of this scene. And uh, I'll meet you on the other side after zoning. Okay, so I just came out of Soul Town. Uh, probably the first thing to cover um, is like a glossary of terms. Okay, Soul Town is what we call an NPC town. These are distinguishable on the Overland map because you'll see their name in Runic and then the name that way. Um, if you see only the Runic, well, that's not going to be very helpful unless you speak Runic. Uh, some people speak Klingon, but maybe you don't want to spend a few months learning Runic to be able to read these. So let me show you how you make sure that you can see the word Soul Town and not just the Runic symbol. If you're only seeing the runic symbol, hit escape. That's going to bring up your uh, game controls. And if you go about, you can see it's about a third of the way down. You're going to see show translated names. If I uncheck that, you see how Soul Town disappeared from there? So you're going to probably want to make sure that's turned on. You could accidentally turn it off and stuff. But that's how you get it back. Show translated location names. Uh, one of the things I oftentimes hit by accident is um, I'll hit N which turns off my nameplate so I can't see who I am, I can't see who other people are, and I accidentally hit that N key all the time. Uh, another one I accidentally hit while playing is the M key. When I hit the M key, you saw how my compass disappeared. It also shows, you know, the time of day, uh, the date and stuff, and time of day is going to be uh, more important later. Um, there might be crafting events. It's also some merchants uh, might shut down during certain times of day in certain scenes. Uh, but so M brings that back and forth from displaying. N is the one that turns my name plate off. And as a brand new player, I myself was hitting these, turning them off, getting lost. I wandered around for days lost on the Overland map. So I'm going to try to help you out by uh, <laughs> going over everything I know I've done wrong so that you don't make those same mistakes. The second part uh, when thinking about a glossary of terms is we called this an NPC town, Soul Town. And again, I said, you know, distinguishable by the little scroll bar there. Um, the other terms that you're going to hear is POT, PRT. POT is uh, the abbreviation for player owned town. And that's literally somebody has bought a little scene where they can customize it, put housing in there. Uh, they can live there. They can have people live there. Um, there's different things going on. Different player owned towns have different. Uh, um, environment some are snowy some might be a swampy things like that um, the other thing is um, uh, PRT PRT are player run towns these are different because the player run towns um, they're not exactly owned by a player uh, like an example would be is dark star um, your uh, one of your devs he he has a player run town and it might have a static layout and he has specific things and he might turn the permissions on and off to where he only allows certain people to live there. Um, so that's the distinction. Uh, moving along this overland map, look, we got people all over here. Hopefully they don't mind being in the video. I'll find out later if they want to be omitted from the video and I'll have to reshoot this segment. Um, but I'm kind of running along the path here. Um, we just came from Soul Town. Solus Bridge, that's kind of where you had started out the, the massacre. You can see that this is a, a scene or an NPC area because of the scroll bars. So this is a scene. It's, it's not a town. Um, when you see these icons over it, that means it's a, um, a, a development or a game asset. If I go up here, I see this little town here. It doesn't have a scroll bar. It has its name, 
right there and I can go into it. That's going to tell me it's a player owned town. I may or may not be able to live there. They may have permissions where only their guild can live there. That's up to each individual use, uh, each individual owner. Um, don't, don't take what I'm saying to mean that you shouldn't go into a player owned town because these people are going to have commerce set up. They're going to have vendors. They're going to have events. They're going to have all kinds of things. I'm just trying to make sure you understand the difference between something, some place you can hunt, uh, some place you can go that's a town, and what a player owned town is. I hope that kind of clears it up because I was very confused my first few days and I kept seeing these enters and I'd go in and I'd go, well, crap, there's just a bunch of stuff here and houses and there's no houses for me and I can't claim land and what should I do and, and things like that. So um, that's the distinction. If it's got a scroll bar, that means it's either a hunting area or an NPC town. And you'll learn which ones are NPC towns. Most are going to be hunting areas. The next probably most important thing is uh, when you're looking at um, a scene to go in and hunt is knowing if you're able, wow, I just keep getting stuck on stuff tonight, um, is going into a scene and knowing if you're able to hunt there. Well, one, you know, the con system, just like in every other game, the color of the mobs tells you. Um, but also there's a great little clue that the devs have put in that'll tell you uh, the base say that two skull is... Uh, 20 to 40 that's not true it's all going to depend on your build and you'll learn very quickly uh, what your expertise level is um, so if I look in here and I zoned in just like now I see two skulls so when we say two skulls we're literally talking about how many skulls are displayed at the entrance to a scene so this is a two skull area so it's not like Solus Bridge um, it's not like a uh, high veil and it's not like Blood River. Those are one school scenes that you started in. You will want to hunt in those for a little bit and you get a little better, get a little bit of gear, get a little bit of stuff, get better weapons, and then you'd move on to a two skull scene. So, so there is a progression. It doesn't mean that you can't take five of you and go to a four skull scene right when you very first start. I'm just saying these are just little indicators of about how hard the mobs will be. Now I'm not super high. I think, I think, um, I think this character's maybe a le level of uh, 50 something. I don't know. Um, there used to be used to hit V to bring it up. I think it's backslash stats now. And again, this is not polished or anything, so this is probably gonna look really ugly right now. But it's gonna show you that eventually there'll be some way to see what your level is. And I'm just going to the top. These are all my stats. Um, okay, adventure level 61. All right, so that's what I was wanting to look at. Just you know to give you guys a guideline I'm 61 uh, levels aren't don't really mean anything in game in game because it's the level of your skills not your adventure level so much but anyway so at 61 when I come in here this wolf is conning green if you're colorblind um, I know that they they did work on these colors some uh, but anyway it's green green's not going to net me much experience you know uh, green uh, green I believe the new colors are green yellow orange um, and again they tried to do some colorblind studies to uh, make sure colorblind players can see it since this is green um, I don't know what the odds are on on un, un being unable to see green but uh, again if I if I can't see the colors I still have the skull indicator at the beginning so obviously this this area is too low for me um, I just kind of wanted to, to show the skulls show the conning system and stuff like that inside scenes when, when I first started playing, they didn't have the skulls there, so I was just running in, trying to kill stuff, and dying. Constant iterations of stuff. Uh, they've also, you know, like I said, looked at color blindness and things like that. Um, up, let's see, we're back to the Overland map. Uh, that was just one scene that we went in. There's um, a thing called Random Encounters, and that's basically when you're running on this overland map watch if, if I didn't want a random encounter they'd be popping up constantly but because I want to show you one it's not gonna pop up but I'd be running along and all of a sudden I would zone uh, I'll give it about 30 more seconds to see if it happens if not I'll just keep running along here until I can pop one to show what happens inside doesn't look like I'm gonna get one I'm almost to what's gonna be called a control point 
and you can identify control points one because they're going to have the runic name and then the name and you're going to see you can't go in until you enter a control point is what separates regions in the game um, they they like to call them economic uh, zones so that basically anybody living here um, these scenes might produce a lot of timber or, or uh, mining and to get to the next zone which might produce a lot of cotton or something I'm not saying that's how it is um, these are just barriers to get through them when you're brand brand new it's gonna be very hard to navigate and get through this area because these are higher level monsters they're meant as a barrier to separate zones um, you can navigate them though as brand new you might die and you're gonna have to learn how to you know get through them dying and, and resurrecting and to get through them um, but they are meant as a barrier also inside of each one uh, there will be somebody that you can pay to zone you from one end to the other and I guess maybe we should show that so I'm just gonna hit pause for a second and go in there and then get up to the guy and kind of show that okay so I just zoned in East Reach, East Reach Gap look one two three four five ow if I'm a brand new player five skulls I'm gonna get eaten I should just know this now if I'm a brand new player and somehow I'm uberly rich because my BFF gave me 50,000 gold because you know I'm just you know that cool I could talk to this guy and he'll take me to the other end of the zone and I won't die but just to illustrate kind of how running through a zone goes uh, I'm not gonna take the cheap way well it's not that cheap 1500 is a lot of money uh, I'm just gonna keep following my path things are gonna attack me look at cons yellow uh, you know I didn't get right up in his uh, area of uh, attack range but again I'm just following the path I'm running up through the gap and you're gonna see this wall coming up here um, some of these have boards where you just click them and it has to open the gate other ones you have to break down uh, so it might take a couple hits so if you're you know running a train through here and 15 things are attacking you you might die while you're trying to do what I'm doing here I'm just double clicking on it trying to get through this before something kills me um, I got through I'm like yay oh look more baddies oh man okay so I'm trying to get through here stay away from that guy he's probably gonna shoot me in the back which is probably not gonna be good oh kind of made it nope somebody let me on fire coming through again I'm staying on the path do not go off the path I did this as a new player a lot I was like oh always trying to find shortcuts yeah shortcuts they're laid out in this game for you stay on the paths <laughs> um, so now I've come to a second one this is like what I was talking about where you know it's just gonna open after I've clicked it yeah it wasn't close enough and my dialogue wasn't showing that I wasn't close enough it would have um, but I just have it tabbed off and you know to avoid tells and stuff while I'm trying to shoot these so now I'm coming up here and if I again stay on the path uh, I'm working my way out again on your compass uh, there's a mysterious mage which is the, where I would have gone if I would spent the 1500 it's also showing me the exit uh, so if I would paid that 1500 gold instead of doing all that running maybe getting attacked I'd be here and it would have saved me a little bit of time so that's gonna be up to you and your finances if you don't mind running through things so now we're almost at the exit point on the other side there's our five skulls again because some people enter from this side and run to the other direction uh, and I'm zoning out now I ran right back to where we had started at East Reach Gap because I really want to try to get a random encounter to pop um, probably what I'm gonna do is run back and forth until it pops but what will happen is it will just you know suck you in so until that happens I'm gonna pause this out and uh, pick up when I get into a random encounter all right so I've spent like 45 minutes trying to get a random encounter to pop I've relogged I've done everything it's just not gonna happen it just doesn't want me to shoot this video now if I was just playing casually and wanted to run from point A to point B one would absolutely pop because it would inconvenience me <laughs> that's just the that's just the luck of the draw of a random encounter um, so I guess I can just kind of go through and talk about uh, what it is a random encounter happens it's a very small mini scene you could say um, some of them will have like a bunch of skeletons in one area but throughout the rest of the area you can find resources like mandrake root and um, uh, 
trees to chop down or to harvest and stuff. And to me as a crafter, I find them very useful because I can spend a very short amount of time and get a lot of resources, especially if, you know, my gathering, harvesting, you know, forestry, well, forestry skinning, whatever is high. Some will have just all sheep. Some might have all cows. Some will have a vendor where he'll have discounted prices and he'll sell things like teleport scrolls and recall scrolls. And you'll see some people that'll sell things for, let's say, 300. Well, they might have bought them from 50 because they happen to get a random encounter with a merchant. Nothing wrong with that. It's, you know, they're making money. Um, again, I wish I could have showed you um, kind of how one is because, you know, there are different scenes. There are different uh, th types of things that come, come in them. Uh, they, they occur randomly, but if you're a crafter or a gatherer, I find them very useful. If you're a hunter, maybe not so much, you know, but, uh, I like to use them cause you know, I can spend five, 10 minutes in there and boom, 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 and rack up quite a good amount of, uh, resources, especially if my meticulous is high. Um, so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to show you one, but they just, you know, as you're walking on the overland map they occur. I don't believe they're in all the zones and zone areas right now because I've really only had two places that they've occurred and uh, this is the one that's kind of near uh, Grafsham Mines. You can say I'm pretty far to the northern edge of the map and then the other one was around Soul Town. Uh, that's the only two places currently in game as of R31 that I've ever personally uh, encountered these. The plan is, of course, that they would happen all over the map. Uh, there's been some feedback that, you know, people are like, oh, I turned on the frequency. Well, as you see, I've been running around and nothing's happening. <laughs> I, I almost would like the frequency up. Uh, they've also mentioned that there would be the option to uh, escape or opt out of. Kind of like if you play like the old Fantasy Fives. Remember, you get that random encounter and you could hit a button and, and get out of it. I think there are plans to possibly make that true. Uh, me, myself, I want to hit, hit them most of the time. But again, that's going to be up to you. Um, so this kind of uh, should give you a little bit of a, you know, basic grasp of the Overland map. Runic symbols, that means it's a, you know, a, a dev asset, either an NPC town or scene to hunt in. This one, you know, that we're right here, this is going to be a hunting area. When you zone into them, uh, you can tell the difficulty area once you're zoned in by the number of skulls at the entrance. Um, Maybe one other thing to point out on this overland map, since we're over here, you'll see boats sometimes. Boats sometimes go to um, in, or to uh, player-owned towns. This one goes to an island. Okay, so I just like took that boat from uh, the overland map, and and I'm basically uh, this would be a good example probably of I don't know if this is a town, Exile Island. Let's see what it is. Looks like uh, I've never been here, so we're discovering this together. This is a PRT. doesn't show that it's governed, so I'm going to have to assume this is uh, an NPC town because I'm not seeing, I don't see up here that it's governed by anybody. So, uh, wow, this is a, a town I've never been to. There we go. Hey, learn something new every day. Um, <laughs> I don't want to bore you. Oh, look at that shipwreck out there. I've never seen one of those before. And again, maybe I haven't explored every single scene in the game, although I think I have. Uh, <laughs> uh, but wow, that's kind of cool. Uh, anyway, that was uh, that should take us if we click this. This should take us back to the overland. So now we're back to where we started. So again, uh, boats will go out to uh, player-owned towns. It looks like it will go to NPC towns. Uh, some will take you from one place to the other. Like I think this is the one that I was really hoping to go to. Um, at first, it didn't have a, a boat going out there. Just, you know, I'm making this video a little longer than we needed to. Uh, but Graf Island. Because you got to love the Graf Jim mines. It was one of the earlier uh, mines, and then you got Port Graf. There's an NPC town. Uh, but I'm going to take this little boat, this little ferry. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. And now we're on Graf Island, and we got a little NPC area there. Uh, I don't know if any more is going to be added, but, you know, it's got a little fondness for the Graf Jim mines. It was one of the first mines, and used to hold a lot of silver and people were just constantly going out there. Um, that I probably should just wrap this up um, since I couldn't get a random encounter to spawn, um, but that should give you a pretty good overview of uh, navigating the map somewhat and what some of the glossary of terms are. Uh, some people think it's uh, a bur burdensome to go from one end to the other. 
But honestly, uh, and I was one of those people too, uh, but honestly, once you learn uh, the control points and kind of learn the map, um, it's not that bad. There's a website that I believe it's called Jacob White's done. It's called sodamap.com. Um, uh, POT owners and stuff can go in there and put very specific things. You know, I think it's subscription based for them. But to the common man, you can put in search terms and say, like, if you wanted to find Graph Island from where you were, you know, you can bring up the map. I'm not going to go into that. Um, that's kind of out of the scope. But uh, there are other resources out there that you can use to help you navigate the overland map and get from point A to point B uh, using this system. Uh, so I guess I'll wrap it up. Happy hunting, be safe, and take care.